Good morning, guys. It's meditation time. Hey, guys. How's everybody doing today? Welcome to January 29th, our daily meditations. Let's start with a nice deep breath. It's so funny to me because do you see how just my, even my voice just drops down a couple octaves and I'm just more calm off one deep breath. I can remember when I first learned, about, you know, like when it first got introduced to you, like take a deep breath and I used to be like, yeah, okay, that's going to friggin' help when I'm in the middle of like flying at somebody to kill them. Like I used to be a raging lunatic. So I always used to make fun of that. But once I started practicing it, I love it. I absolutely love it. And I know I can look like an idiot at times taking a deep breath, but I don't give a shit because it stops me from doing things that I should not be doing. Okay, guys, let's start and jump right in to our Just for Today by N.A. If you have this book, please pull it out. Read along with me. We are on January 29th, the first step and action step. At first, many of us may have thought the first step required no action. We just surrender and then go on to step two. But step one does require action. The action we take in the first step will be evident in the way we live, even from our first day clean. If we truly believe that we are powerless over our addiction, we will choose to be around. We will not choose. Excuse me. We will not choose to be around drugs to continue to live with with or associate with practicing addicts may indicate a reservation in our program. An absolute belief that the first step applies to us will ensure that we clear our homes of all drugs and paraphernalia. And guys, if you are not familiar, the first step is, um, I admit that I am powerless over my addiction and uh, that my life has become unmanageable. That is step one of the narcotics of the 12 steps. So that's what they're talking about here in this, in this, uh, in this reading. Oh, get it together. My brain sometimes. Okay. Where was I? As time goes on, we'll not only continue with the basics, but add new actions to our first step repertoire. We'll learn to feel our feelings rather than trying to control them. We'll stop trying to be our own and only guides on our recovery journey. Self-sponsorship will cease. We'll begin looking to a power greater than ourselves more and more for spiritual satisfaction rather than trying to fill that void with something else. Surrender is only the beginning. Once we surrender, we need to learn how to live in the peace we have found. Just for today, I will take all the action necessary to practice the first step. And I truly believe it applies to me. Okay. <clears throat> Personally, I have never, uh, worked the steps like at all. I know what they are and I know the gist of them and how they work. And I was really interested in trying to work them. And I just didn't know how, like, how do you know you're ready to go on to the next step? What is the work that has to be done? Like some of them are self-explanatory. Uh, I think it's step four is make amends with those like you have hurt. And obviously that would be make amends, you call the person, you write them a letter, you make an effort to apologize and let them know that you recognize what you did was wrong and you're going to try to change yourself from here on out and you ask for forgiveness. Steps like that are self-explanatory and obviously you know when you're done, when you feel like you made amends, duh. But there's other steps that are like, like they said there, some people might think, okay, yeah, I'm powerless over drugs. My life is unmanageable. Next. Obviously not. Obviously we have to, you know how they always say like do the step work. That is something um, I would love some clarification on. If anybody has any advice to give on working the steps. Um, I remember I did ask one time, uh, I'm not sure who I asked or in a meeting or what, but the answer I got was <clears throat> that's the job of your sponsor or that's their role to work you through the steps. So maybe that's the answer to get a sponsor and have them help us out. I'm not sure, but, um, I can see like, that's the, that's the whole basis of the program is like the steps, like everybody knows the steps. So, um, yeah, that's a good one. 
I will take all the, all the action necessary to practice the first step. And I truly believe it applies to me. Yeah, absolutely. I could sit here and say, yeah, I am powerless over drugs and my life was unmanageable without a doubt. Yes. Um, an absolute belief that the first step applies to us will ensure that we clear our homes of all drugs and paraphernalia. I could see that because if you truly believe you are powerless and you have absolutely no power over that, you will remove yourself from any situation that could bring that to you and you will clear your house of any paraphernalia. Okay, I mean... <clears throat> Maybe I should like do a little bit more research on the steps. Let, let me know in the comments below. Like I know that, you know, I'm not getting, I've only started this channel, I don't know, a month now. So I really don't have anybody watching it consistently. Maybe I'll wait until I get a little bit of an audience and um, see if you guys are interested in like going through the steps and working the steps on the channel. That would be something cool. Okay, guys, now we're going to jump over to The Language of Letting Go by Melanie Beatty. You guys know the drill. We love her. Um, they go so well together. And we're going to go over to January 29th, going to meetings. I am still amazed after years of recovering at how easily I can begin to talk myself out of attending meetings. I am also still amazed at how good I feel when I go. <sighs> okay. Let me not start talking. You guys, I'm sorry. My foot keeps falling asleep. And that's why I keep. There we go. Okay. We don't have to stay stuck in our misery and discomfort. An immediate option is available that we will that will help us feel better. Go to a meeting, a 12-step support group. Why resist what can help us feel better? Why sit in our obsession or depression when attending a meeting, even if that means an extra meeting, would help us feel better? Too busy? There are 168 hours in a week. Take one or two hours a week for a meeting that can maximize the potential of the remaining 166 hours. If we get into our codependent stuff, we can easily spend a majority of our waking hours obsessing, sitting, and doing nothing, laying in bed and feeling depressed, or chasing after other people's needs. Not taking those two hours for a meeting can cause us to waste the remaining hours. Too tired? There is nothing as invigorating as getting back on track. Going to a meeting can accomplish that. Today, I will remember that going to meetings helps. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that kind of applies to everything in life. Like that, <laughs> me and my mom were just talking about this the other day. Like we are not morning people at all. Can't stand waking up in the morning. Hate it. But, you know, so sometimes we have appointments that we have to wake up and be there in the morning early and we were talking about how good it feels once you're up and out and it's early in the morning and like there's not a lot of cars on the road and you go grab a cup of coffee and you get shit done and everything is accomplished by like 1 p.m. You still have your whole day. You just feel so productive and positive and friggin' powerful. Like I feel great when I do shit like that. It's pushing yourself to get to where you have to go. Once you're there, you're gravy. Everything is good from then on out. And that reminds me of what this reading was saying. You know, why don't we do that? Like we know that a meeting will help. I used to actually struggle with meetings in the beginning. I did not like going to meetings. Um, and I figured out that it was just the meeting that I was going to. That's another thing, guys. If you try to get into meetings and you find that you get there and you don't like it or you don't feel comfortable there, try a different meeting. Try a different one. Try a woman's meeting. Try a men's meeting. Try a dad's meeting, mom's meeting. Um, there's tons of different options for you. That was my problem. I did not like the meeting that I was, go that I was going to and I started to use that one meeting spot um, to demonize meetings. They glorified getting high so much. Like it was constant talk about using and the fun they had using. And I just found that I would leave there like wanting to use. I'm like, I, 
I, I, I don't like when they don't work for me. And that wasn't the case. It was just that one meeting, uh, didn't vibe well with me and that's okay. Like people don't vibe. Not everybody in the whole world is going to vibe together. So, um, don't give up on something right away. Look around, find something you're more comfortable with. You'll, you will find one. Um, I think because when COVID was really like at its height, they were doing meetings on Zoom. Um, I think they have now gone back to in-person meetings. If I, if I am correct on that statement, I'm not sure, but, um, I, I can imagine even jumping on a Zoom meeting. You don't even have to leave your house. You know what I mean? Just, just turn it on, share, get that shit out of you. Don't keep it bottled up. You will feel so much better. Um, journaling. That is a huge, 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 huge escape for me. I absolutely love journaling. And, um, some people don't though. So these are just some ideas. I'm just throwing some options out there for you guys. Um, try it out. Try everything. Don't shoot things down without trying. Try because you surprise yourself sometimes at what you do actually like and what actually works. <clears throat> Journaling for me, I, I, I know I would love it. It aligns exactly with who I am. Like I love lists. I love organizing. I love pens and nice stationery. Like I should have been an administrative assistant. I would have rocked that job because that I love it. <clears throat> like I love the whole office vibe shit, filing, all that. So journaling goes hand in hand with who I am as a person. Um, <clears throat> and it's very effective for me. Excuse me. It's very effective for me. So <clears throat> I find that it just helps to, you just write whatever you want to say, you know, and that could help with people who have a problem talking to other people or getting out their feelings. You could just spit everything out all over that paper. And if you're worried about somebody finding it, rip it up afterwards and throw it out. That's very therapeutic also. I mean, you, you could do, I've done that before with letters to people. I'm going to write this letter and I'm going to rip it up and throw it out. The act of ripping it up, ripping it up and throwing it out and getting rid of it forever is very therapeutic. Guys, just try it. So if you're struggling, push yourself just a little bit to get where you're going. And I promise you will feel so much better afterwards. You will feel so accomplished and your psyche will thank you. Um, so yeah, guys, that is it for today. I did read both, both readings, didn't I? Yes. I'm talking so much. I forgot. All right, guys, we are, that is it for today. Today is a good day for a good day. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please subscribe. Please let me know in the comments what you related to, um, with these readings today. Go out there, be a boss, do the damn thing. I will see you guys here tomorrow.